to look at the screen, microphone, Great. and advance here. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you to the LNO, KBS, our host, uh, and to all of you. Um, I'm Chris Nitch from Lukio LTR. I'm here with my colleague, Jess Zimmerman, uh, who is the lead PI of Lukio. Um, we had no sea ice this year in Lukio, Puerto Rico, <laughs> or for the last maybe 200 million years. Um, some quick site news I'm gonna burn through here, but it's important to recognize we have a whole bunch of new mid-level research staff on board, some people shifting roles uh, um, and some new faces as well. And this has really upped our capacity to do things both in the field and programmatically. So we're really excited about that. Um, infrastructure wise, we've been suffering for many years since Hurricane Maria and Irma in 2017. We still don't have full-time electricity, but we do a proposal into NSF for a solar system um, and that went in at the end of the year, so we should be hearing something hopefully very soon. Um, so fingers crossed that the next picture will be a little bit different. Um, we have some new developments with a through-fall exclusion experiment. Uh, we uh, have a prototype that we built. This is essentially we're trying to dry out an ever-wet forest. Um, this is coming online now. We're collecting baseline data, and then we'll be, be ramping up with um, more treatments over, the, over the, the next year. So this is very exciting work as well. Um, and just like to recognize some of the network collaboration, some of this work with uh, folks here in the room, as well as uh, you know, science-wise, ecological science, as well as uh, public engagement work through the Appeal Project. We're right in the thick of that now, and that's really, really cool, helping us think more about how we um, how we engage with the different communities uh, that we serve and work with. So, to the questions of scaling, then we do mon monitoring and manipulative work at many different spatial scales. Um, as at the other sites. We're within a rural tropical montane setting, uh, forested setting, and so we do things at the landscape scale, patina scale, stand and reach, um, looking at changes uh, in uh, precipitation along elevation gradients, soil moisture, temperatures, um, looking at uh, soil redox, um, also looking at landscape scale processes of hurricanes, disturbance, as well as uh, uh, land use history. And so we try to put all those different things together work at multiple scales uh, and combine them. Um, and one of the places we've had some good success doing this is thinking about the, the effects of hurricanes and, uh, on uh, biodiversity. And we can use this model here thinking about broad scale heterogeneity patterns of patches and their distribution and sizes and arrangement across the landscape and disturbance that also is affecting fine scale demographic processes of organisms and vegetative communities. And then really the, the linkages of those two things together that are um, helping us understand more the dispersal uh, of biodiversity and um, really thinking, about, uh, it's been a, success, a successful framework for us to think about um, how species assembly occurs in these uh, disturbance mediated environments. Um, and there's some work here on the screen from Mike Willig and colleagues who, who've um, demonstrated that this framework is quite useful for understanding the gastropod communities that we have in our forest dynamics plot. And there are other examples as well. Um, another a scaling success has been thinking about climate downscaling um, and from regional climate data in which we've been able to um, link the role of atmospheric aerosols uh, to that are associated with the Saharan air layer, the, Sah the Saharan air layer and how that can lead to rapid drought <laughs> onset. Um, and so uh, taking that and then linking it together, that's helped us do some dynamic downscaling with uh, partners at UGA um, and modeling, which is showing that our ever wet forest is probably gonna be go going more towards a, a moist forest that was significant drawing by the middle, middle of the century. And that's where the through fall experiment that we're bringing online comes in. Uh, and we're able to link this all too um, with some landscape scale changes that we observed in evapotranspiration uh, after Hurricane Maria when there was large defoliation. So working together at all those different scales um, has been quite, quite powerful. As far as some of the challenges, I think this is something that many folks have, have said here today. Um, we work you know, at the, in the Lokio Mountains at, at these many different scales, but we also have partners who are working at the island wide, wide and regional Caribbean scale. Uh, and the challenge there is that many of those, those sites that they're working at, um, they align conceptually, but they're distributed unevenly. Uh, the data doesn't necessarily align spatially or temporarily. Um, and so a lot of that work is sort of happening in parallel, and we're trying to figure out more how do we integrate that in a way that is um, uh, more directly with our research and, and our questions. Um, and um, I think that's a challenge that, that probably all of us are familiar with in one way or another. And then the final one is, is perhaps resonates with many of you is thinking about where are the boundaries